Welcome to Dust Geek. So we are going to do a beginner's series of videos on Lightworks. Now, the reason I'm doing this series is because hopefully it helps the community, but one of my patrons asked if I could do a series to help uh, show the basics of Lightworks. And as a patron, they get a say in some of the next videos that I work on. So I am very happy to produce this. And as somebody who's been using Lightworks for just a few months to produce my content, uh, it's perfect to do a beginner series because I am very much a beginner myself. So as usual, if you are in the community and you are an experienced expert in Lightworks, feel free to add your comments below on some of the things that I missed or could add in future videos. And we're going to start out this first video is just showing around the interface and really how to navigate around Lightworks. Now Lightworks is a fantastic professional editing tool and, but it costs money. It is not free and open source. If you're looking for a free and open source tool to utilize in Linux, then I would suggest Caden Live and or Olive, which is an up and coming video editor that looks absolutely gorgeous out there. But we are going to focus on Lightworks here. I also have Keymon at the top. So you can see when I press my mouse button, the mouse button there and I hold lights up. If I press it once, you can see it kind of clicks away. And this is a great in case I forget to mention one of the keystrokes that I'm doing while I am moving around in these tutorials. So hopefully that helps you as well. When you first set up Lightworks and get it installed, you're going to see a screen like this, except it's gonna be completely blank. You won't even have this video here. And this is all of your local projects. So as you start completing video projects, they will show up here. Now, there is also a cog wheel up in the right-hand corner. And you can see there are some options here to go into full screen mode, to choose full screen preview monitors, to show hints, to show tool tips and how fast you want it to show them, to do some basic testing and to activate the licenses if you've purchased them. If you do not purchase a license, I believe you are limited to a 720p export, but it does not have watermarks, which is nice. But if you do purchase a license, I highly recommend you wait till one goes on sale because you can get them for up to 50% off. That's how I got mine on Black Friday. So now looking at this, the first option that we really have, we don't need to mess with settings when you first get in, is create a new project. So we're going to enter a name for our project and we're actually going to create a whole video that will show up on YouTube. We're going to do all the editing and processing like I would normally do, though this is a simpler video. Uh, that we would normally do for one of my uh, content videos that go up on the Dos Geek channel. So the name for this is going to be Screen Mirror. And the next section will confuse some people. So every device that you have, whether it's a phone you're recording from, a camcorder, a DSLR camera, doesn't matter, is going to have a setting on it to choose what frames per second that it's recording the video at. Now, in my case, I have set up OBS and my webcam and my phone and my devices to record at 60 frames per second, so I have that consistency. However, if you don't know what frames per second you imported your videos on, I'll show you a little trick on that in a second, or maybe you have recorded at 30 frames per second from your phone and you've recorded at 60 frames per second on your desktop, you may need to use a different option here. So you can use auto, which is going to attempt to determine based on some of the clips that you first import in what frame rate you're using. You can do mixed rates to say, hey, I'm gonna use a mixture of 30 or 60 frames, or you can do 60 FPS. Now, why wouldn't you always do mixed rates? Well, in some cases you can create, depending on how you're cutting and trimming and adding different pieces in some fluency issues within the video itself. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose 60 frames per second because that's what I imported my video as. And we can put a description here so we can remember what we're doing and um, showing application to mirror Android device to your desktop. So that's the video that we're going to be creating here. So once you click create, we're going to be taken to this screen, which is a log. And there's not a whole lot you can do here. You can see if we opened an existing project, we would see a bunch of video clips or whatever we imported. But since this is a new project, there's absolutely nothing here. Now we can click on local files, like it's saying, and now we can start importing things. Now in your local files here, we have the ability to choose from different shortcuts on our desktop or different drives. If I had connected a phone device here or I had connected a camcorder, I could pull from here directly. 
but I highly recommend you just use your basic file manager or whatever program you like to import your content from your devices onto your computer. Take that content, move it all into one folder. Like you can see I've done here in under videos, I have the SCRCPY, which is the name of the app we're talking about, video folder. And under that folder, I have listed out all of my content. So I've taken it from the various sources and I've moved it into a folder. And then I just navigate here to that place under the local files and I have all of my videos here. And this is the little hint here that if you start your project out, it will tell you what the frames per second are for each of these clips. Now you can notice that one of these outputs, which is the same as this output, but one is at 30 and one's at 60. So I'm gonna to wanna to use the 60 frames per second across the board here. So to bring these in, I'm just going to go ahead and double click them and it will bring all of these videos in. And you can see that this is a still image. It's a JPG, but it shows at 60 frames per second. Well, still images really don't have frames per second. However, in some cases I've imported still images and I've set everything to bring in at 60 frames per second but the image will show at 30 frames per second. If that happens to you, and it'll tell you you can't import it unless you use something like mixed rates, just go back out. It's just a little bug within the program and go back in to the project that you created and it will update itself to the 60 FPS automatically. I don't, it's just a little bug they've got to work out in Lightworks. It didn't happen this time. Sometimes you'll see it, sometimes you don't. But notice at the top, you've got log here. So we've imported these by just double clicking on them, our content that we want to bring in. And now we can go, we have options for editing VFX for video effects and audio. So we're going to go into edit mode now. And here is what you're probably used to seeing in most video editors. So I'm going to make this full screen now. Let's see if I can move this into a corner. Uh, I'm going to make this full screen and you can see this is what you are normally used to within reason seeing in your typical video editing software. We have here at the top project contents, local files, audio network, and pond five. These were the same options that we had over here in log. We have a sequence viewer here, but it's empty currently. And we have a timeline down here with a video one, audio one, audio two. And these are attached because most people have audio coming in in stereo. You can ungroup them if you want to, but most people have stereo audio for the right and left. So you're going to want to probably keep those together. And I'll show you that when we bring in one of the files. Here's all the content that we imported previously. And if we want to bring some of this content into the timeline so that the sequence isn't showing empty here, I can just click and drag and kind of snap it to the beginning. And now you can see it automatically move my marker all the way to the left. And I have now the beginning video that plays for every DOS Geek video that's ever been made. Well, there were some earlier variations that are even worse than this one, but you get the idea. Now we can see in here, I have an option to zoom in and zoom out. And as I zoom here closer, uh, I can get into more detail with the slider in the various audio segments, and I can see more detail in the waveforms of the audio, which can help for clipping out situations where, you know, maybe you have a long pause or you say, uh, for a long time or something like that. So you can get into more detail right from this timeline. Additionally, I can use the slider down here to move across my timeline. That slider will not be very useful in the case if I zoom out too much because you can see I can't even move it. So that slider is really for when you have zoomed in really close uh, to your content and you've got a lot of footage on here, then you can quickly move from uh, different segments in your timeline. You can also see that we have our seconds and minutes here of how long the video currently is. And here we have, you know, about a 10 second clip for our intro, which is about the max that people don't get annoyed and just click on a different video I found. That's not too bad. So this is how, if I just click and hold, I can move that slider around. This is, you can see it has the video here, the audio one, audio two. I can turn off the audio if I just want to make changes to the video and not have it affect the audio. Or I can do the opposite and turn off the video and make edits to my audio without impacting my video. So those are some quick tricks there. 
One of my favorite features of Lightworks when I first went into it is the preview clip screen. So we brought in all these clips and generally if I'm doing a very complex video, I'll have videos from my phone, videos from my DSLR, you know, videos or pictures maybe from the internet that I'm trying to combine. But sometimes that kind of snapshot doesn't really tell you what's in that video or there's something specific in the footage that I caught where I don't want all the footage, but I just want a certain section. And to accomplish that, all you do is click on some of the content that you have shot and you can see it's going to bring a preview window open for that specific clip. You see it's not adding it into the timeline. The timeline is synced here with the sequence, but it's giving me a preview so I can hit play here and I can watch this clip or get to a certain segment within this clip that I want to edit and be able to you know, clip out, mark in, mark out, and move that content into the timeline if I want to or just make sure this is the right clip that I want to use. So this preview becomes a really, really important feature to use as you get more media and different files and things that you wanna play with. And we'll get more into that in the trimming and clipping uh, sections. But for now, just know if you double click on some of your content here, it's going to show up in this preview so that you can preview it before you move it into your timeline. Some other important features here, if you hover over any of these buttons, it will tell you exactly what it does. It will also at the very end tell you the key binding. As you'll notice using your keyboard to make edits and things is faster than clicking around a screen in general. So if you wanna know how to play, you hit the space bar. If you wanna nudge forward, hit the right arrow. If you wanna move uh, forward to the next Q mark, hit S, add a mark in as I, et cetera. So, and you can see each of these as I just move my mouse over them, tell me exactly what that feature does, what that button does and gives me a key binding for it. You can see that the only difference between your preview and your sequence editor is there are three more buttons over here on the right that you don't get in your preview section that you do get in your mean sequence that's tied to your timeline. You get a record a voiceover so in this case, I'm going to be using this feature because there is no audio for some of these clips. So I just recorded the video itself of the things I wanted, and I'm going to do a voiceover instruction set on top of it. So I can go to, once I pull that in and click this, and it's going to give me a pre-roll, which is really nice. What that pre-roll does is it goes back three seconds before it starts recording. So that way you have a second to gear up and then it will show you the recording button and then you're live. So it gives you a pre-roll before it starts recording if you want to do um, some voiceover work. The other ones are very, very important because you're gonna use them a lot as a new user and that is the undo and redo command. So if you want to undo something or redo something to bring it back, those are your buttons there or you can use Control Z or Control Y as your keyboard shortcuts to do that. I will also show you the VFX editor here so we're, not, we're gonna get into this more in a later video, but this is where you can add text. This is where you can do image uh, over image overlays and all kinds of various uh, settings for uh, different colors, graphing, routing that you can add in here, but we will get into this in more detail later. And you also have audio where you can do a lot of more additional audio adjustments such as mix master EQ, removing wind reduction. You have an equalizer over here to change volumes and things like that. You can do some of this stuff on the edit line, but uh, this in these specific sections, you can do far more advanced things uh, with your clips. Okay, so I think I've covered everything I wanna cover for this first video. This gives you a great view into how to navigate around. The last thing I'll show you is if you wanna get back to the screen because you want to get into a different project or the first screen that we started with you just click on that back button to get back into a project you just double click on it and it'll bring that project back up so that is uh, what we're going to stop with here on this video in our next video we're going to look at some cutting snapping importing different uh, types of content such as audio and doing some basic cut work so we'll start getting further into editing this video of mine and hopefully this tutorial helps. Leave your comments below. Let me know some other things that you wanna see and I will see if I can oblige or let me know if there are some different shortcuts or things that I missed. I would love to hear from you, the community. And until next time, get out there 
and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the video.